As NASA prepares for its journey back to the moon, plans are being made to build the communities that astronauts will call home for up to six months at a time. Paving the way for lunar living, next on Real World. NASA's plans to put outposts on the moon will require a whole lot of site preparation, including landing pads, roads, and foundations for habitats. So NASA scientists and engineers are working to create the tools that will build the infrastructure from resources already on the moon. This blade is approximately four meters long, so it is wider than a terrestrial bulldozer would be. Rob Mueller is a deputy manager for Lunar Regolith Excavation. The advantage is that the blade covers the wheels, and now you can get a very smooth surface. As you back drag this blade, you're grading it, you're planing it. Just as impressive as the blade is what it attaches to. This is a very versatile platform. We call this a lunar truck. It's like having a pickup truck on the moon, and you can add all kinds of accessories to it to make it do different functions. The standard platform, or lunar truck, is in the prototype stage right now, in the form of the Chariot Rover. By taking the standard platform and putting an attachment on it, such as a lunar bulldozer blade, now we have a whole new set of functionality where we can actually go build things on the moon. We can build a landing pad. We can take an area which is topographically uneven, and we can make it even with this lunar bulldozer blade and all you have to bring to the moon is this one blade which will weigh about 100 kilograms. So that's a very nice solution in terms of mass efficiency. Mass efficiency is a measurement of size to productivity, so anything in this quadrant would be ideal. The less mass, the easier it is to get it to the moon. The more efficient, the more NASA can get done in a shorter time. The moon dirt, or lunar regolith, will provide lots of resources for astronauts. The oxides in it can be used to make oxygen and water. Regolith also blocks radiation from the sun. And since the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to block solar radiation like, like the Earth does, it's very important. We could even bury a habitat and have that shielded from radiation and from micrometeorites and have a more stable thermal environment. So there are a lot of benefits to using regolith, which is a local material, because all you have to do is bring the machine up and then use the local materials to build whatever asset you need on the moon. The landing site is also a spot where excavation tools will be needed. When the lander lands, it basically sandblasts everything that's already located in the outpost. This is footage from the Centennial Challenge Competition in New Mexico. The plume interacts with the soil, this fine powdery dust in the desert, in the New Mexico desert and right away this dust cloud develops. So the interaction of the soil is critical and this is a big deal because of visibility, spoofing sensors, and just dust getting into mechanisms and all kinds of locations where we would prefer to keep dust out of. Because of the lack of the atmosphere on the moon, the dust spray wouldn't be exactly like this. In a vacuum, the dust would be more of a flat spray but it would be accelerated to uh, velocities up to 1.5 kilometers per second. So we're concerned about it, and we're looking at ways of mitigating this plume dust interaction on the moon. One way to do this is to use the excavation tools to build berms around the landing sites to keep the dust from areas where astronauts will live. A berm is a mound of dirt that can be used to protect or insulate the area. Another option is to stabilize the regolith. One method is called sintering, and this is where you melt the regolith so that it becomes tacky and sticks to itself. And it's very much like paving a parking lot. And, and that's one technique we're looking at. We're also looking at other techniques, for example, putting gravel down, or rocks of a certain size that cannot get blown away, and lining the whole surface with rocks. So as plans move forward, NASA engineers will continue to build the systems that will build our new outpost on the moon. Keep track of their progress at www.nasa.gov.